I would like to call this regular meeting of the Board of Selectmen for Monday, September 27th, and the time is 7.17 p.m. to order. So uh, please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay, first selectman's report. Um, COVID-19 update. Um, we're really in a, in a good trend. Um, although we continue to have a few cases um, almost every day, not necessarily every day, um, we've had half the number of cases in September that we had in August. So that's a really, really nice trend. And um, we've had declining weekly cases, which is also a great sign, especially because we just started school. So fingers crossed. We have a 1.4 weekly positivity rate. 90% of our vaccine eligible public has been vaccinated. 71% of all Darien residents are vaccinated. And when you give under, you know, reflect on the high number of ineligible residents due to their age, under the age of 12. Um, congratulations to the town of Darien for um, being great adopters of vaccines. Um, on the other hand, a significant number of our cases are in fact breakthrough cases. So the fact remains that, you know, it's true that vaccines are working to keep you out of the hospital and from getting a severe case of COVID, but Vaccines are not keeping you from actually getting COVID. So protect yourself, that's, that's the key. Do what you can to protect yourself and your families. Um, booster shots, there's been a lot of news lately about booster shots and we've posted this on the town website. Pfizer vaccine is the only vaccine so far that's been approved for use as a booster for people who meet certain criteria. The first criteria is that uh, according to the Connecticut Department of Public Health, you have to have had initially received the Pfizer vaccine to get a Pfizer booster. I know there's been discussions about, um, you know, immunity from, from mixing vaccines, but Connecticut DPH says Pfizer vaccine, uh, Pfizer boosters for Pfizer vaccine recipients. You have to be 65 years and older or in a long-term care setting or uh, under the age of 64 if you have an underlying medical condition or you are at increased risk for getting COVID expo because of your exposure and transmission from an occupational or in an institutional setting. Um, if you want to explore that further or find a booster shot provider, you can find those uh, on the state's website at covidvaccinefinder.ct.gov. Um, continuing the discussion about drainage and flooding, um, a federal disaster declaration has not yet been issued. Uh, we are ever so hopeful. I saw the governor today at a completely unrelated issue and he asked how we were doing and I said um, we're doing fine but we need a federal disaster declaration. Um, Fairfield County has apparently met the disaster assessment threshold but apparently we need at least one other county to also meet a damage assessment threshold and that has not yet been met. Um, so they've kept the damage assessment information collection portals open so that people can continue to provide that information to their, your, their municipality and their regions so that we can hopefully get to the necessary thresholds. But we are also looking into other potential grant opportunities that may exist through FEMA. I've shared some information through West Cog with staff here that will be looking into different kinds of grant applications. Um, so I had a, a meeting today with Jeremy and Ed and Mark McEwen to begin to put together uh, a list of things, action items for the town to move forward and we will anticipate bringing that to this board um, at our joint after our joint department heads the board of selectmen meeting after in that morning time. So um, stay tuned for that and that's it for my report today.
Kate. Nobody more. Okay, then we will move on to uh, selectment updates from your activities. Kip. The only update I have is <clears throat> we discussed last time the possibility uh, due to a four-week delay in receiving roofing materials due to a shortage in one of the chemicals used to make the roofing material. Uh, it required us to do a thorough analysis of rescheduling options um, and the cost of each of those options. Uh, the team of Rusty Schreiner, David Kravenzola, and George Krasowski, um, we went through all of that process and we've come back with um, an option that we think makes sense. Uh, we presented it to Dr. Adley, to Duke, and he's going to present it to the Board of Education tomorrow. And the essence of it is that the only change will be the academic win, rather than being completed in April, will be completed in June of 2022. The result will be that rather than trying to move everybody from the old school into the new school over one week, Chinese fire drill, to say the very least, will now have the summer to have the classrooms set up by the teachers, and when the kids come back in the fall of 2022, August of 2022, they'll go into the new academic work. The uh, assembly wing will still be completed as originally planned in May of 23. So that's, that's our change that we're recommending. The cost is a nominal amount, maybe between 91 and $120,000 for mm -hmm. the overtime needed to make sure that works. That's not too bad. Like that. Yeah, might work out better in the end. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. The light, nothing? Okay. okay. Sarah? Thriving Youth uh, met for the first time this year, this past Thursday, and the main focus of the conversation was on the Youth Asset Survey that was conducted in February. Um, the survey was conducted in the middle of a pandemic, and so the data is, um, you know, it could be an aberration, it could be indicative of trends, and they're not sure yet. Um, the survey focused on two main areas, which are substance use and mental health. Substance use is down, and they're not sure if this is due to COVID and the kids are home, or if it's a downward trend. A strong indicator for your kids not using is parental expectations. Parents are being vigilant about not using substances as a major driver of students that are not using substances. So parents, their attitudes absolutely affect the kids. The mental health results show that students are struggling. Looking at a slide here, it says 31% of our kids show that they're thriving, they're okay, they're doing great, and that's a great number. 23% of our kids say that they're okay, they're feeling okay, they're a little stressed, um, feeling some levels of sadness and anxiety, but 46% of our kids, almost half of our kids, are feeling anxious, depressed, and they're vulnerable. And these students can be um, more susceptible to substance use, which we need to focus on. So right now, they're still looking at the results of the survey, and um, we're gonna be coming up with some things that we can do to focus on changing some of these behaviors and how the kids are feeling, so. Thank you. Yes. I have a question for you, Sarah. Yes. I know we're going to be receiving yes. a presentation yes. um, of all of the survey results, but it's done every three years, correct? Mm -hmm. So the next survey will be done after the rollout of um, uh, the legalization of recreational marijuana. Correct. So I'm wondering if the Thriving Youth Task Force will kind of focus on zeroing in if the legalization has had any kind of impact. That's a phenomenal question, and um, it's not something we discussed last week, but I'm sure as we go forward um, and mm -hmm. looking at, you know, for mm -hmm. the next survey, it, I'm sure it'll come up. Great. Do you mind absolutely. bringing that up on my of behalf? Of course. Okay. Absolutely. 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 Okay. okay. Thanks so much. Mm -hmm. Okay. If there are no other updates, um, public comment. I don't see any public here. Kate, have we received any public comment? No. Okay. Terrific. Then on to new business. Um, I welcome our guests, Jeremy Ginsburg and Fred Donite, to talk to us about the Planning and Zoning Commission's thoughts about opting out of the new state laws on parking. So please. Thank you, Jeremy. Mask on, mask off. Whatever you're comfortable with. We are all vaccinated here, so, and we're distanced. Good evening, everyone. Jeremy Ginsburg, Planning and Zoning Director, Director of Land Use. I'm going to talk for about a minute or two. You all have a memo dated September 23rd, which lays out some of the basics about the multifamily parking opt-out. Fred is going to cover the topic of what the commission's done. I'll talk a little bit about Public Act 21-29, which amended State Statute 8-2, the zoning statute, if you will. And one thing that that Public Act did was 
set a standard for parking for multifamily housing throughout the state of Connecticut, which is one space for a studio and one bedroom unit and two spaces for a two bedroom or more unit. And what's interesting about the act is it gives local planning and zoning commissions and local communities the ability to opt out of that provision and set their own standard. So I'll talk a little bit about the process for doing that. We're right in that process now since the law takes effect October 1st. Uh, we really need to get moving on that. The Planning and Zoning Commission will be holding a public hearing this Tuesday, October 5th, a week from tomorrow. Uh, they will then make a decision whether they wish to opt out. They must state upon their records the reasons for such decision and publish their decision in the newspaper. Thereafter, the town's legislative body, the RTM, must also vote and they must approve it by a two-thirds vote. While we're here tonight presenting the information to you as the Board of Selectmen, uh, the state statute did not envision or require a role by you, so we're here for informational purposes more than anything. So when you see the commission and when you see the RTM acting on this, you'll know that that's kind of the procedure, planning and zoning commission first, RTM second, and we're here to kind of fill you in on what's going on behind the scenes. So we do expect to go to the RTM Monday, October 18th. As I mentioned, we need a two-thirds vote f from the Planning and Zoning Commission and a two-thirds vote by the RTM. Uh, if neither of those are achieved, we go ahead with the state standard, which Fred will tell, talk to you about. If both votes pass, we'll use the standard recently adopted by the Planning and Zoning Commission. So I'll have Fred talk to you a little bit more about what planning and zoning is done in terms of changing their standards. So the Planning and Zoning Commission has really weighed the potential for opting out of the parking standard since the, uh, since the Public Act 2129 was voted on and passed in early June by the state legislature and what the commission ended up doing was adopting a regulation amendment, a zoning regulation amendment, uh, reducing the parking standard for multifamily residential units in the town um, from two and a half parking spaces, which was the standard that has been in effect in the Darien zoning regulations for quite some time. Um, for really across the board for studio one, two, three plus bedroom units. Uh, it's been two and a half unit, uh, two and a half spaces for quite a long time. Um, so in this regulation amendment, the commission reduced that standard to one space for studio apartments, one and a half spaces for one bedroom apartments, two spaces for two bedroom apartments, and two and a half spaces for three plus bedroom apartments. Uh, <clears throat> and really that standard that the commission adopted really only differs from Public Act 2129 by uh, a half a space for both one bedroom and three plus bedroom units. So as Jeremy mentioned, the Public Act requires one parking space for studio or one bedroom apartments and two parking spaces for two plus bedroom units. Uh, as I mentioned, we're one and a half for one bedroom, so going up by a half a space for one bedroom units and going up a half space for three plus bedroom units to two and a half spaces. So um, it's really this, th these, th the commission deliberated on this quite extensively and uh, the, it, it was the, the, the thought of the, of the commission that these changes really ensure sufficient on-site parking for multifamily projects for uh, both residents, visitors, and deliveries to the site. Uh, the commission also noted that many streets in Darien, many public streets and roads uh, don't allow for or don't have sufficient room for on-street parking, um, whereas in other communities across the state, particularly 
larger towns or cities might have additional parking available on, on their streets. Uh, that is not necessarily the case here in the town. Um, and really the, the commission will continue to monitor the, the effects of, of these regulation amendments that have been put into effect. Uh, they actually took effect this past Sunday, uh, the Sunday the 26th. Uh, they were adopted by the commission in July, so there's been a little bit of lag time between the adoption of the regs and the, uh, the effective date, uh, which was Sunday. So, as I mentioned, the Commission will continue to monitor the effects of, of, of these changes and uh, we can certainly, the Commission can certainly make changes uh, in the future regarding either lowering that standard or increasing the standard based on, based on what we see in the town. So, Jeremy or I would be happy to answer any questions you might have about it. But that pretty much wraps up our presentation. Thank you, Fred. Thank you, Jeremy. So I'd like to open it up to board questions. Fred, is it the, as I read the document, uh, is primary the lack of on-street parking that's really concerning the, 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 the planning and zoning commission that we don't have ever for parking space. We have to have them on the offsite, not on this side of the building itself, right? Yeah, that's correct. I, I, I think. The, the legislation that was passed by, by the state uh, really does envision that some of these or a lot of these parking needs will be met by on-street parking. And um, the, the commission has, has taken the position really from the beginning that a one-size-fits-all approach to, uh, to these parking standards and quite frankly other standards that um, we won't talk about tonight, but other standards that have been implemented as part of this public act as well. Um, this one-size-fits-all approach just isn't uh, the, the most, uh, the best way of going about things for, for the state as a whole, in particular for, for the town of Darien. Questions? I got so I got her hand up. Thanks. So the public hearing is October 5th? Correct, yes. And then when, do, when, when will you meet to make your decision? So after the public hearing on October 5th, the next step will be for uh, the proposal to opt out to go to the RTM. Uh, the RTM will vote as well. And as Jeremy had mentioned, uh, we need a two-thirds vote by both the commission and the RTM to opt out. So. The RTM will vote to opt out or whatever they decide that they're going to do. And after, um, actually, let me back up there, sorry. Um, the commission, the Planning and Zoning Commission will likely vote to opt out or whatever they decide to do on the 12th. The public hearing will be on the 5th. They will vote likely on the 12th. And then after that vote, it'll go to the RTM. Sarah, David? I guess um, it, I might have a hard time understanding of the percentage differences between the spaces, between the new regulations and then what we currently have. Um, it's, it's maybe hard to give an example of a development, you know, the number of spaces. I know it depends on the number of bedrooms and studios and therefore, um, but let's say for a, um, a 40 unit complex, can you maybe guess as to what the difference in spaces might be? Uh, I know it's a guess and it's, it's sure. not well, easy. We can do, we have a, uh, one thing we, the commission focused on is, I'll call it standalone buildings. Okay. So for example, uh, the corner of Leroy and West, that's a 16 unit yep. building. Yep, exactly. There are two spaces, uh, right. they're all two bedroom. Right. right. So if you think about that standalone yep. building, if you didn't have enough parking, right. you can't park on Leroy, you right. can't park on West, right. and you'd be walking a couple blocks. There are a few of those standalone buildings. Garden Homes is one across the street from Roy's. Yep. It's a standalone apartment building. That's 35 units. Those are a mix of studios and one bedrooms. Uh, that has an affordable component in there as well. 
we have some mixed use. So what, for example, what Federal Realty is building is mixed use. Commercial on the first floor, residential on the upper floors. Those are mostly, I think Fred, two bedroom, a smattering of one bedroom in the Federal Realty project. Uh, the Palmer's No Road Heights Shopping Center redevelopment, that is a mix of one and two bedrooms. Yep. Uh, Avalon, that's 189 units over off of Hollow Tree Ridge Road. That is actually a mix of one, two, and three bedrooms. Right. So uh, if you think of each one separately, or think of a neighborhood you might live in, if there was not enough parking at a specific time or moment or for days, you know, people might park on the street temporarily. But when you think of overnight parking, right. or in the winters in the area, we don't allow parking on the streets for snow removal. Right. So that would be another issue that was come up. So I can't give you a definite. Yeah, um, it might be hard to give a number, you know, space. Like if those 16 spaces that were required to that building that's in the corner of Lee Road and West, how would it be under the new regulation? Would it be 10 spots instead of 16? Would, do you know what I mean? Would be it's actually 40 spots if under the old, under the your old, the planning and zoning old regulations, right? Two and a half spaces per unit. Okay. Yes, that's correct. So it would be okay. four, four fewer spaces because it would be 36 spaces under the new. Right. right. I'll do that here. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. So just trying to quantify it. Slightly it. Yeah. fewer. The commission did have a comfort level. The commission for many years has had a reduction for mixed use buildings. Uh, common sense. Yep. You're not going to have all the employees. Right. And, yep. So, but this doesn't really get into that. This, okay. is, this statute was geared towards standalone. Okay. Got it. Thank you. Any questions, David? No. No. So I, I just want to make a comment that I, I appreciate the thoughtful approach of the Planning and Zoning Commission on this, looking at it from our perspective with our sort of, you know, largely older New England roads that um, some are wide, some are probably more narrow than they should be according to roadway standards. And, you know, our community highly values pedestrian and bicyclist safety. So, um, you know, we've had our... Uh, police officers opining uh, regarding on-street parking in a certain neighborhood recently and how um, dangerous that can be for young children. So I think there's a lot of other good reasons to try to find that sweet spot where we can get on-street parking uh, but not have it spill over onto on-street parking if we can avoid it. Um, and finally, a question is that if a developer were to come to you and say, we want to do this development, your new parking standards require X number of parking spots, but we're going to tell you why we'd like you to um, consider you know, a, a special permit for less parking. Is that something that the commission would entertain? On a standalone site, just an apartment building, uh, they would need a variance okay. to if they're not sharing parking in a mm -hmm. situation like that. So uh, could they go to the Zoning Board of Appeals and get a variance and say, yeah, I have a hardship, I have a unique circumstance? Possible, no one's ever done it, but I wouldn't rule it out. It might depend on the specific location, uh, but it's possible. Developers also could provide more. They could say, hey, we see your standards, but what we like to do is, you know, it's a feature when you buy or rent buy a condo or rent an apartment, does it come with one, two spaces, two spaces? You know, that's kind of, they view it as an amenity sometimes. So sometimes you might see, you might see the future developer saying, I'm putting a little extra in because it gives me the ability to reserve spaces, promise spaces to tenants. So we might see that as well. Okay, thank you. Any other questions for Jeremy and Fred? Thank you. We'll follow the process carefully and uh, certainly weigh in with testimony in the public hearing if we feel that's important. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> We're going to move on to our appointments. Um, we are appointing members to the uh, Board of Selectmen's uh, ARPA Advisory Committee this evening. And um, I'd like to 
put forward the names we've already decided for the first selectman of course will be me until the administration changes and we voted to seat Monica um, the chairman of the Board of Finance will sit initially um, until that also changes so John Zagrodsky um, they've asked Dan Bumgartner to be their other Board of Finance representative um, finance and budget has put forward Martha Banks to serve as their representative the Advisory Board of Health has uh, uh, agreed to provide Kevin Cunningham to the committee and we're still waiting on a member of the Chamber of Commerce. We have some interest from one potential chamber member, um, but you know he wants to have a little bit more of a conversation before committing. So um, with, with your approval, uh, with the exception of seating a member of the Chamber of Commerce this evening, I'd like to recommend um, the, the makeup as I described it this evening for the ARPA Steering Committee. Does anyone have any questions, comments? Looking forward to getting this work going. Yeah. Um, you know, Kate and I reviewed Fairfield, Connecticut's ARPA plan. They're getting about $25 million, uh, and it was very detailed and lots of different spends. So um, I think we're, it's time for us to get to work and figure out how we're going to spend our 6.2. Okay, thank you, Kip. May I have a second? Second. David, thank you. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. Um, and at our next meeting, I'll have the chamber member to add to the committee. Okay. Um, we had had the, um, the great pleasure of having four potential candidates for the Environmental Protection Commission to fill three spots. Um, so uh, after our deliberations, um, I'd like to entertain a motion to approve Carolyn Bain's appointment to the EPC for a term expiring on June 30th, 2024, pending her resignation from the RTM. She has to resign from the RTM first, and then her term can begin. So, so David will move that. May I have second. a second? Okay. Uh, Monica seconds. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Great. Thank you. And I'm recommending Lauren Rossi's appointment to the EPC for a term expiring 630 of 2024, again pending her resignation from the Beautification Commission. So Kip moves. May I second? Sarah seconds. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 And then uh, entertain a motion to approve Peter McGinnis' appointment to the EPC for a term expiring on June 30th, 2023. So Kip moves. May I have a second? Yeah. Sarah seconds. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Great. And as always, um, for those folks that have stepped forward to volunteer, we thank you so much. Um, there's always room to volunteer for things. So if you're not chosen for one position, there are many others to, uh, to possibly consider. So um, thank you to everybody that came forward. We have meeting minutes of our uh, meeting of September 22nd, special meeting. Any corrections or additions? I have two minor corrections from my own report. Okay. Terrible, right? <laughs> 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 any, any further corrections or additions? Is this for the 22nd or the 20th? 20th. The 20th. 20th. Oh, I just had one little thing that I saw, Kate. Yep. On page um, 8 of the packet, which was the second to last page of the, or um, under um, number 9. Yep. Motion to approve minutes. Just has a kind of a slash. Yep. Thing. Okay. Great. Okay. So um, motion to approve the minutes as amended. So moved. Sarah moves. May I have a second? Second. Second. Monica seconds. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. Agenda review. Um, I, I do want to take a moment to just share another note from my Board of Selectmen comments about the drainage and flooding. We are looking to find a uh, grant, FEMA grant writer to bring them on board to assist with what we think will be a pretty robust and lengthy process for some of our residents and for some of the projects we may want to do. So we're, we're searching for that. Okay. okay. Agenda review. Uh, I was just, just going to ask, you had mentioned uh, giving a time for each of us to make comments about the flooding. Uh, yes. Yes. Yep. Uh, 
do we have a time in mind for that? Uh, we can certainly do that at our next meeting, if, if you're going to be prepared by our next meeting to do that. I'm ready. Okay. So the next one would be the 16th. Joint the, department heads. The quarterly, but do you want yeah. to do it on the 25th or do you want to do it that one? Well, we're going to have a little bit of a discussion with Jeremy and Ed and Mark what? at that Board of Selectmen meeting. So yeah. it might make good sense for us to make comments then. Tie it all in together. Would that yeah. be all right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Make sure you have breakfast. Mm. Well, yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a long one. Keep your last one. Any other items for agenda review? No. Okay. Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Kip moves. Sarah seconds. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Great. Okay, thanks. Thank you.